Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to share what's inside my December sub tub because I have about four to five December themed activities that I think you and your students are really going to enjoy. Now as always I will let you know where each activity comes from and of course I have some freebies just for you. If you've watched my videos before, then welcome back. And in case you are new here, my name is Susan Jones. I am a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher who now spends a lot of time here on YouTube sharing tips, ideas, and strategies for K through two teachers just like you. So if you're ready to see what's in this December sub tub, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's dive in. All right, the first activity I have for December is to learn all about reindeer or caribou. Now, I've been putting these in each of my monthly writing units. They look like this. They're in my SJT Writing Club, but they're also on TPT in case you are not a member. But what I've been doing is focusing on one topic, and I have my students learn a little bit about the topic, and then they share some nonfiction facts. So in December, I thought reindeer or caribou would be a great choice. And I actually shared this book over on Instagram, and many of you have also loved this book. Um, it's part of the Day in the Life series, and this one's Polar Animals. It is a great book for teaching all sorts of things like uh, table of contents, so nonfiction text features. It has uh, bolded words, it has labels, it has captions, it has everything. And of course it teaches students about reindeer. Now if you don't have access to a book like this, I also suggest using this video right here from SciShow Kids. Those videos are great for all sorts of science related topics. They're only about four to five minutes long. She does talk pretty quickly, but she shares a ton of facts all about caribou in this case. So I will link that video and I will go ahead and link this book down below in the description in case you wanted to check either of those out. But after students go ahead and either listen to the book or they listen to that video, I want them to share some non-fiction facts. Now in that writing unit, I have a bunch of different pages they can use. You can see some here have um, traceable sentence stems, other ones have word banks, because I try to make this unit really applicable to kindergarten, first and second grade students. And the differentiated piece really comes in with how much you want to have them write. So in kindergarten, I would have them share just one fact they learned. I'd probably have them trace that sentence stem and just share one thing about reindeer. In first grade, I'd probably have them share at least two different facts about reindeer. And in second grade, I would have them write a little uh, informative paragraph saying like, these are some facts about reindeer, or this is something I learned about reindeer, share a couple facts, and then add a closing sentence. So I like having all those options, but as a substitute, I would actually probably have them use a page like this one right here. And we did do this with uh, spiders, and I also did this with turkeys. And I love the fact that it has a little directed drawing, and then students would just share uh, reindeer facts. So reindeers can, reindeers have and reindeers are. And they would have to come up with one fact for each. So this is what I did with first grade students. With my kindergartners, I would probably actually just have them use the directed drawing um, activity in the big box and still have them do that traceable sentence stem, if that makes sense. But yes, activity number one in my sub tub, all about reindeer. All right, activity number one had students thinking about some nonfiction reading and writing related to kind of science, animal science type things. With activity number two, we're still gonna focus on some nonfiction reading and writing, but it will be in the social studies realm. In December, it is a great time to learn about all different holidays that people celebrate around the world. So I actually made this great freebie last year. It looks like this right here, and you download it in Google Slides, and let me just show you how it works. Okay, so when you open your freebie, you'll see that it has been preloaded into Seesaw as well as Google Classroom. So you will click this on the Google one. Um, I like to use this one because it has the video links already in it. The Seesaw one does not. You will have to make a new copy so the original file doesn't get uh, ruined in any sort of way. And then when you get to your copy of the digital holidays around the world, it will load and it says some holidays from around the world. So you and your students can choose which one you would like to learn about 
and you'll just click right to it. Let's say we want to learn about Christmas in Germany. We'll go to slide four. Here is the video where you can watch. Um, sometimes it's a link of a read aloud. Other times it's a link of an informational video. Um, I also have over on my YouTube video that I originally made this uh, freebie for, so I'll link that too. I have some book suggestions too, but you might already have some of your own. But after watching this video and or reading a book about Christmas in Germany, you can either have students take out a piece of paper and write down what they've learned, or you can type it here together um, as a whole class. It's totally up to you. And then what I would do is because this would take a little bit of time, I had these stars here. So after we learned about Christmas in Germany, I would have students, or I can do it myself, drag a star over and say, okay, we've already learned about that one. So you might spread this out over a week, you might do two in a day, and then the next day you could go learn about Kwanzaa. You could watch this video, you could read a book about Kwanzaa, and then type some facts you've learned. So it's a really uh, easy to use, interactive kind of freebie where you can have students learn about different holidays around the world. Now, of course, I made that during, you know, digital teaching time. So students were actually typing out their responses. If students don't have access to a Google account or iPads, you can definitely just take some plain writing paper and have them complete some of those same exact activities. So they can just write down some facts that they learned about different holidays. If you're a second grade teacher or even a first grade teacher, you might wanna have students compare a holiday that they celebrate with a brand new holiday that they learned about. Or in kindergarten and first grade, you might just wanna have them share a new fact about a holiday that they learned about through those videos. As a sub, I'm lucky enough to have access to my teacher's smart board. So I actually have that file, I email it to myself, and then I am able to in any sort of downtime or if I'm actually planning out some sort of literacy or social studies lesson, I can go ahead and put that up on the board. We can choose a holiday, click it, and learn all sorts of fun facts. Moving over into math, I have this game right here. It's called Run Run Rudolph, and you can actually play this both with addition and subtraction, so it's a great way for students to review those skills. Let me show you how it's played real quick. All right, so in Run Run Rudolph, this is a simple game where the goal is to be the first player to get from start to finish. Now, like I said, there are two different ways you can play. And in the freebie, I have the addition directions right here. And I also have the subtraction directions. So for addition, students are going to need two dice and they will go ahead and roll both of them and find the sum. Three plus three is six. Six is move three. So that's what they'll do. One, two, three. Then the next player will go seven, move two. One, two. It is basically as simple as that, where students keep rolling the dice, and then based on the sum, they have different things to do. So you can see there's a lot of move back, there's loose turns. Um, so whoever can get to the end first is the winner. And then if they happen to get there quickly, I would just have them play again and again, so they can play a few times. Now for the subtraction version, Subtraction, again, the goal is still to be the first to get to the finish line. Now, for this one, all they're going to do is they're going to roll two dice, and they are going to subtract the smaller number from the bigger number and move that many spaces. So here we have five minus two equals three. One, two, three. And then it would be second player's turn. Three minus one is two. One, two. Four minus three is one. So they just do some simple subtraction and they continue that over and over. And of course, if the numbers are both the same, five minus five equals zero, they don't move any spaces. But again, a fun, simple game, Run Run Rudolph, be the first to the finish. As you can see, it's a relatively simple game, but it can be played over and over again. And like I said, you can switch it up between addition and subtraction. That game is actually from a really old Christmas unit that I had made back in like 2012 or something. Um, so I actually just took that game out and I made it a freebie. So I will link that down below for you to grab. Speaking of really old TPT products, another freebie I have is this one right here and it is called Pick a Present. I went ahead and printed out a few copies of these. And here students are actually going to try just decoding and sorting words based on long long and short vowels. The board looks like this one right here. It says pick a present. 
and there is a starting place and a finished place with some stockings and some presents. And then I included a bunch of present cards here. So you can see there are all types of different words with different patterns that they may have heard. So you could do this even whole group if your students can't decode these just yet. But what you would do is you would mix up all these present cards and turn them face down. Now you can also see there are some stockings in here as well. And what students will do is take turns and you'll flip a card and they will have to read the word flip. If that has a short vowel sound, students will go ahead and move one space forward. If the present card has a long vowel sound, they can move forward two spaces. And if a student flips over a stocking card, they get to take their opponent's piece, their game piece, and move it back to start. Now, as you can see, some of those words included a lot of different vowel teams. So like I stated, if your students in first grade aren't yet ready to decode those on their own, you could definitely do it for a small group of students that can, and they can play two players. But I've also done this before where I will put the board under a dock cam and we will play as a team, or not as a team, sorry, we'll play as a class. So it'll be Mrs. Jones versus the class. And what I'll do is I'll flip over the card, I can either read it allowed and then have students determine whether it was a short or long vowel sound and they can have a player from the class come move their game piece and then Mrs. Jones goes so I'll do the same thing. You can also then call on students to kind of read the cards too um, so you can differentiate it in that way if you know students might not be able to decode uh, a word with a y at the end yet but they can decode a word like flip you could call on different students based on what they know so far. And of course they love that because if they go ahead and flip over a stocking, they love moving the teacher back to start. So that's a fun little freebie. I'll go ahead and link that down in the description below too. All right, and with activity number five, I always like to bring some sort of social emotional learning skill into my subtubs, just in case we have any downtime. And I just think it's a great time to read a story about one of these skills and kind of pose some real life questions for students to think about and reflect upon. And in December, I think talking about our feelings is a good one. Not only just identifying feelings, but normalizing, accepting, and recognizing our feelings is a good topic to talk about this month. You know, with December, all the holidays and craziness and students will maybe compare what their holiday is like compared to their friends' holidays, family visiting, stress of parents and people at home, it can be a lot. So there's usually a lot of feelings going on during this time anyway, and a book I love to read with my class is The Boy With Big, Big Feelings. This story is about a little boy and it basically says that sometimes his emotions seemed bigger than everybody else's. Um, for instance, he might cry or have a hard time when he hears some loud sounds go by. He might be fearful at nighttime, but he also has, you know, these wonderful happy feelings as well. He experiences empathy when he sees his mother getting sad or feeling stressed out. He also can kind of feel it. And I also love the colors of this book. It really shows some things like what these emotions may look like. For example, uh, if he's feeling sad, he, he may cry, his lips may quiver, and also his, you know, his fists may clench up if he's feeling upset or maybe afraid, the big thumping heart in his chest if he's feeling anxious about something. But also in this book, he worries about what others may think of his big feelings. He's He feels kind of isolated by these feelings until he sees a girl on the playground who also seems to be experiencing some big feelings too. It's a really cute story and he ends up making friends with her and they realize and recognize that, you know what, everyone has these feelings. Sometimes they may show it a little bit differently, but you know what, everyone on the playground has big hearts and they have a wide range of emotions just like he does. It's a great book for students to really understand and accept that all these feelings are completely okay, whether they're having them or if they're seeing another friend or classmate experience these feelings, that, you know, we can normalize this and not have those students feel isolated. Now, I included that book in my December writing pack as well, and I actually included these little discussion cards with some questions you may want to ask your students after you've read this book. 
maybe have them identify some ways we might notice someone experiencing different emotions. Things like having tears or quivering lips or maybe their cheeks are getting red. And then we ask our students, you know, can you think of a time where you have had a big feeling? What was it like? And they don't have to necessarily share it with the class. It might be something that they've gone through personally, but they can if they want to. And then I like to have them identify and differentiate that big feeling from maybe a small feeling. And lastly, this card on the bottom here is one that I really always make sure I point out. And it says, if you are experiencing a big emotion, how can others help you? And with a question like that, I really want students to think about how there are different ways that people may need help. For example, sometimes people would like a hug. If they're feeling a really big emotion, they just want a hug or feeling some sort of physical touch to feel safe. Other times, that's the last thing somebody would want. If they are feeling a really big emotion, they might just need some time and some space away from others. Sometimes students might want to talk it out. They need to get their feelings out there and express them in different ways. So it's important to recognize that all your students are going to react differently and how they can be helped is going to be different too. And in terms of making friends with one another, it's a good thing for them to recognize as well that, hey, just because I want a hug, if I'm feeling really upset, that not everybody else does. Or same with space or talking, it's really important that you can ask a friend, how can I help you? And that they can respond with a way that can really help them. So there you have five different activities that I have already prepped and are included in my December subtub for when I go into classrooms this upcoming month. I love sharing these ideas with you because even if you're not a substitute teacher, whether you are a classroom teacher, a homeschool teacher, or just a parent who's looking for some extra fun activities to help their kids, I think these are a whole lot of fun. They are seasonal and most of them are free. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you get notified of every new video that I upload to my channel. And don't forget, always be sure to open that description down below that has the links to pretty much anything I mention in any video. Whether it's a book or a resource or where to grab those freebies, make sure you grab those down below. See you in the next one, bye.